All right, Cody, should we go and get started? Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate everyone who is joining in uh, for this Google uh, Work Safer uh, session. Let me uh, share my deck real quick, and then we can put it in there. Okay, so I hope everyone can see my screen. My name is Goldie Nora. I'm a Google Workspace customer engineer, and we'll be happy to take you through this journey of uh, work safer with Google. Now, uh, essentially, Google Workspace is a program which includes best of the applications which can help uh, increase your day-to-day -day security uh, posture, which includes Google Workspace, Beyond Corp Recapture, Chrome, Google Pixel, and of course, tight end security keys, but also uh, it complements uh, the security posture with including uh, third-party applications, uh, which can help Google to even uh, give you better security within Google Workspace. However, my assumption is that most of us on, on this call, uh, we are already using Google Workspace in some capacity. So I've uh, tweaked the presentation in a way so that as a Google Workspace customer, you can get more uh, most out of this uh, session. So uh, first, let's talk about some of the security components available within Google Workspace so that you can leverage and get most out of your investments uh, in Google Workspace. And then we will start asking ourselves, if we already have Google Workspace, why do we need Beyond Corp in the first place? Why should we complement our Google Workspace with Beyond Corp? And then I'll uh, give a bit of overview of Beyond Corp. And finally, if we have time, we will also cover some of the Beyond Corp uh, demos so that you can get like uh, a real idea on how Beyond Corp works uh, in conjunction with uh, Google workspace and finally if you have any questions please uh feel free to add in q a or chat or just uh, ask after the session okay so with that let's start with the google workspace the security components uh, themselves for example identity is always the first layer where you apply the security policies so within google workspace you can of course start with secure authentication you can make it strong. For example, in a traditionally, you have those password policies where you can say password length will be X, Y, Z. Users cannot reuse the passwords, but you can complement that with the Chrome functionality where in case if the same corporate password is used on any other website, like your Google account has a password, if that same password by your user is used on any other website, you you can trigger an alert you can uh, enforce that user to change the password essentially uh, you are asking your users do not use the password that you have used for your google workspace account anywhere else but as we all know passwords alone are not safe enough so that's why within google workspace you get multi two-step verification which includes a lot of uh, uh, second factors, but internally at Google, we use uh, security or FIDO key because they are kind of phishing uh, resistant. They work on uh, private and public key. So even if uh, your uh, your users are visiting some sort of phishing uh, websites, they won't be able to get the credentials because those websites are not registered with your security key. And that's what we recommend our customers to, uh, that there are multiple factors, but uh, prefer using security keys as the only acceptable method for your second factor. Now, uh, in case if you need to eliminate passwords at all, uh, you may leverage Google Workspace as your identity provider because first you uh, you uh, authenticated yourself to Google with the strong uh, authentication, including the security key. Now you can take that identity to other places. And these places may be uh, Salesforce, Asana, and multiple applications. So it will also help you with user experience because all your users will get this centralized dashboard where they can access any of the assigned applications with just one click without a need to enter their credentials for all those applications. There is a large catalog. Uh, so you will find all the applications uh, that you may need to assign to your users. But in case if it's uh, not there yet, you can of course create a custom SAML connection and create a custom 
application so that your users uh, won't need to enter passwords when they'll try to log into those apps. Now, there are some use cases where, uh, you know, you have uh, some legacy applications which rely on LDAP protocol. Today, they might be hooked up with your LDAP server or maybe your Active Directory. You can also leverage secure LDAP, which is Google's directory as a service. So instead of hooking those LDAP supported applications with LDAP server or AD, you can hook them up with Google itself. So uh, for any LDAP related uh, you know, authentication call or authorization, that can be redirected to Google secure LDAP in LDAP as a service fashion. Now, in case if you if you have already invested in a third party identity provider like Okta or Azure AD or Ping Identity, you can still leverage Google Workspace as a service provider. The objective is to not have uh, users keeping multiple passwords for each of the applications that are assigned to them. So, uh, most of the prominent identity providers support provisioning and authentication to Google. So you can have centralized provisioning system where, you know, as a, if the user is provisioned in a certain group or organizational units in, in your identity providers, based on that logic and rule, that user will be provisioned inside Google Cloud Directory. And then you can leverage a single sign-on from those prominent identity providers. We recently launched this functionality of multi-IDP support. Uh, might be a case for very large organizations where they have multiple identity providers. And now in Google, you can create multiple SAML profiles. And then you can assign the authentication of, uh, of those uh, you know, groups or organizational units to those IDPs. So uh, something like uh, if a user belongs to my contractor's organizational unit, then Google is the IDP. But if it's my full-time employees group or organizational unit, then Okta is my IDP. And by the way, we will talk more about it when we talk about authorization or beyond corp, but it is certainly possible to leverage Google's uh, side of authorization and authentication from the third-party IDP. So you may you may leverage uh, Microsoft Azure AD or Okta or Ping for authentication purposes. And on the Google side, you can still have authorization such as a context of your access policy or beyond corp enterprise policy. Now, there are some admin best practices. I know if you're joining this call, chances are that you in some capacity lead uh, or manage Google policy making or administration. There are some security policies that we recommend, such as always go with least privileges with delegated administration. Ideally, admins uh, should have separate accounts than the user accounts they use for their day-to-day -day, uh, messaging and collaboration uh, activities. Security keys should be enforced and try to keep the session timeout as least as possible. Though we'll talk about context of your access and authorization, which uh, minimizes uh, you know, what you keep as session timeout. Now, there are some application access controls too. For example, in Gmail, uh, there are a bunch of controls that we uh, that we offer. It's of course a SaaS application, so it is shared responsibility model where we enable uh, some of the checks and and security measures by default. However, we also recommend you to configure your set of controls. For example, when an email comes and uh, it is asking a user to click on a link which takes the user to an OAuth consent screen to give some sort of access to that user's data. We will go ahead and look in case if you have uh, allowed list uh, that specific scope for that application. So that becomes then uh, your responsibility to make sure that you are not allowing access to all the APIs. You are specifically allow listing a specific list of client IDs and uh, auth scopes against those uh, client IDs. Similarly, do leverage uh, some of the recent developments that uh, have been happening in Google Workspace, including the Google Drive Trust rules. Now, initially, uh, with sharing controls, it was binary. You can share uh, or not share based on the organizational units, and then you know, in case uh, of, of allowed list domains. 
you that that's the scope but now you can go very granular so for example within the organization itself you can create a policy which will say uh, research organizational unit uh, in our uh, our Google Workspace account can only interact with research organizational unit in another workspace account. Do classify your data too, because that might be the first step to figure out what uh, what kind of policies would be applicable based on the sensitivity of the data. So we launched uh, a data classification where you can apply labels automatically or ask users to apply them, uh, which will essentially uh, you know, classify whether a specific document or sheet or slide is confidential or not. And once you have data classification done, you can then take the next step uh, to prevent any kind of data uh, loss based on some conditions. And these conditions may include some of the triggers that we provide, or it can be very custom to you, maybe leverage a word list or regex, and also the labels that you use to classify the data. Now, Google Workspace is, is, a, is a great messaging and collaboration system, but uh, to enhance your experience even more, there are some uh, enhancements available. For example, there is a uh, app script uh, functionality, which is essentially is, is it's JavaScript that executes on Google uh, servers where you can automate certain things. You can leverage add-ons or build add-ons. You can also uh, access marketplace applications. There are thousands of them, which would enhance your uh, your users' uh, experience and make them more productive. But it also comes with uh, a shadow uh, IT risk. So we would recommend you to take some control measures there. So for example, in Google uh, Marketplace settings, you may say, users are allowed to install uh, marketplace apps but only the ones that are available in our allowed list because we have assessed the security uh, and privacy controls of those applications and they are good to install similarly there are uh, api controls available within your admin console which will take you one uh, step further where you can create policies uh, in very granular fashion you can say this client id can only access this specific OAuth scopes. And they will then uh, override any marketplace apps too. So if you have a scope here that's not available, even if the marketplace app in, is installed, it won't be able to access that certain scope or the user's data. Now, I understand there are hundreds of controls and uh, we will just make a switch to Beyond Core because that the session is primarily meant for that. But I'll leave you with this. In case if you have enterprise subscription, you can go to your admin console, security center and security help, where you will see this kind of dashboard or this kind of checklist, which essentially uh, will tell you which of the security controls we recommend you can see that and uh, if you see the green check mark congratulations you did a great job there you have already applied that policy but in case if you don't see that just hover over uh, that star and it will take you to the documentation where we will tell you how to apply that specific security measure so that you can follow it apply it so that can be a great place to follow all the security recommendations from google in case if you do not have enterprise uh, subscription, it's a great resource. If you just Google uh, for security, security checklist for Google Workspace, you will find these uh, checklists for small businesses and also for large businesses. There are hundreds of controls mentioned there. Do follow them to see which ones you have applied already. If you haven't yet, a uh, recommendation would be to apply those. And then uh, certainly subscribe to Google Workspace blogs so that you can, you know, you can make yourself yourself aware of uh, the recent developments happening in Google. And you can, you know, then leverage those controls and security measures in your Google Workspace. And finally, I think that's, that's given because you're joining this event. Do uh, uh, subscribe to or become a part of Google Workspace community because customers like you and Googlers participating in these communities, helping each other from their mistakes, from their learnings. So that can be a great place to uh, participate. Okay, with that, let's switch uh, the gears a bit and move towards the authorization. Now, as you know, authentication is the process of uh, validating or, or, or proving who uh, you are, who you say you are. 
And that you do usually by putting in your username, your password, and in case if there was a MFA enforcement, you will also type the MFA security key or code, and now you are authenticated. But the second layer after that that comes in is of authorization, which really defines or uh, can you access this specific resource in this moment based on the context. So you do have some basic level of uh, authorization within Google Workspace. For example, you can say, well, my marketing uh, organizational unit, they should not be able to access YouTube uh, with their corporate email address. So you can have application assignment uh, kind of authorization within Google Workspace. And assuming you're running uh, enterprise subscriptions, you can take it one step uh, further. You can apply context to your access where you, you, know, you can leverage user context such as user IP address, location, or device contract context, whether this device is, uh, is running x.y.z operating system, is it uh, encrypted, etc. You can also leverage Chrome context. Is this managed browser? Or is this a profile managed browser? Uh, is the security event reporting enabled in the browser? And also Alliance uh, leverage partner uh, context. So for example, we have a Beyond Crop Alliance partner uh, group where multiple uh, third-party vendors are, are alliance with us, including JamF and uh, VMware uh, Workspace One, etc. So in case if you're already leveraging some of those, maybe you have a vendor which gives you signals for threat intelligence, you can leverage that context too to make a policy which will determine whether a user can or cannot access a given resource in that given moment. And this conditional or context of your access is dynamic, which means even if, I mean, traditionally what used to happen is you will log in to uh, Google Workspace or any other application, let's say, and you will be granted a token and that token will be valid uh, for, let's say, four hours or eight hours. But with context of your access, because the evaluation of your context is continuous, even if you get access, maybe you have a only in-office access context of your access policy. You are in office, you authenticate it, all good. But as soon as you uh, move to nearby Starbucks, your IP address changed, your context changed. And maybe when you click on a button in Gmail next time, an API call will be made, your context will be evaluated again. And based on the policy, your, your access will be revoked. So... And, and it's not just uh, uh, applicable to Google Workspace applications, but also on SAML applications where Google is acting as your identity provider. So these are some of the signals that are collected uh, uh, in terms of context of your access. These are you know, user signals and device signals and partner signals. Now, one uh, watch point here is in case if uh, you are just leveraging the user side of signals, which means the IP address or the geographic location, then these policies can be applied on any browser, maybe Safari or, or any other browser, because these are the signals that we are collecting within the browser uh, itself. However, if you need to leverage a you know, browser or, or device or the partner signals to make your policies, then there is a small extension. It's called uh, endpoint verification that is pushed to Chrome, and this will help he, help us gather the context from the device or the partner, and and uh, will help you make the policies. Now, there are two uh, scopes uh, of uh, of context of your access, and this might be important in case if you're asking. Well, I already have the context of your access in Google Workspace. Then why do I need Google Beyond Corp? So number one, uh, context of your access, it gives you binary access control. So you can define your context of your access policies. And based on those policies, your, your decision will be binary. You can say, based on this context, the user can or cannot access a specific resource. For example, if context of your access conditions are met, then user can access Google Drive. If they don't met, then user will not be able to access Google Drive. So that's binary 
application access or application is not accessed. Second scope is the workspace native and SAML applications. With the context ever access, when you apply the policies, these policies can be applied on native workspace applications like Gmail Drive, uh, Chat, Meet, etc., and also on SAML applications. So where Google is acting as your identity provider, maybe Salesforce or Asana or any, anything else. So let's say in case if you need to take a step further if you need to make it and a user can access google drive based on these conditions but once they are in google drive based on their context they should not be able to download the documents which are sensitive so for example based on these conditions in context of your access user can access google drive yes but if the user is coming from a personal device then can user access content from Google Drive. No. So if you need to take a step further than the application access, that's where Google Beyond Corp can help you uh, complementing Google Workspace controls. So what exactly is Google Beyond Corp? Now, this is the definition that you will find on our uh, Google Beyond Corp website. But essentially, the key points here is, number one, it is our own implementation of Zero Trust architect architecture which essentially shifts the control from the network parameter, which might say if the user is inside the office, then should be able to get access to resources. But if the user is outside office, then won't have access to resources, which doesn't work nowadays, as you know, we all are working in this new hybrid world, we may say. So Google Beyond Corp will shift the access controls from network parameters to users, which may include user context, device context, browser context, partner signals. And it allows you to enable secure access from anywhere without a need of VPN. So let's, let's uh, do a deep dive understanding how exactly Google Workspace is different than Beyond Corp. So Google Workspace, as we discussed, including you are already on enterprise uh, subscriptions and you have context of your access uh, available, you can apply controls based on conditions, but these conditions or these controls are binary. User can or cannot access application. With Beyond Corp, you can go one step further. You can apply granular controls based on context, such as even though based on context, the user has access to Google Drive, but users still cannot access data. And it's not just Google Drive. What about uh, Salesforce? If user is accessing, accessing Salesforce and trying to download a list of all the uh, customers, that user should be blocked to, to do that even if it's not a Google native application. How about applications which might be running in other clouds, maybe Azure, AWS, or within GCP, or maybe if you have applications on-prem and you need to put a gate between the users and these resources in Google and other places, and that gate will make sure that the access is evaluated based on the user and device and partner signal and browser context so you can have threat intelligence uh, or chrome as a firewall in between now there are multiple subscriptions available i won't say multiple i would say just uh, just two of them essentially because the baseline the free subscription is is given to or, or part of uh, any google workspace uh, google cloud platform subscription for uh, for the Google Workspace side, we recently launched a new subscription. It's called Enterprise Essentials, which will give you, uh, you know, Chrome-based DLP policies. So you can apply policies which will work after the context of your access-based authorization is checked. You can have malware protection, phishing protection. You can have, uh, you know, of course, CA for Google Workspace is already uh, given in uh, uh, Enterprise subscriptions. And then you can leverage the context from user device, Chrome, and third-party signals. This uh, is primarily meant for, or for Google Workspace customers who would love to complement the security controls based on, condition, on conditions uh, on top of Google Workspace. But if you have resources along with Google Workspace running in uh, third-party clouds or maybe in GCP, 
or maybe on-prem, then you may consider Beyond Corp Enterprise, which is the next tier, which will cover everything that Beyond Corp offers, including the Google Workspace protection, plus protection for uh, GCP and other clouds and on-prem resources too. Now, before I uh, move towards the demonstration, a couple of things in terms of flogging and reporting, whatever we have been discussing is, is logged when your users try to access uh, resources based on their identity context. And uh, by default, we retain six months of logs within the Google Workspace Admin Console. However, uh, except you know, a couple of things like email log search, I think is retained for 30 days, but there might be a chance, especially for organizations like yours, which might be large in size, that you need to meet some compliance and need to you know, retain these logs for a bit longer. Then there are some options available. For example, we integrate with some of the prominent uh, SIAM systems like Splunk. Uh, it, there is a native uh, connection between uh, Google Workspace and BigQuery once you sign up for the BigQuery project and do the required configuration. We send all the logs table to BigQuery every day. And then finally, if you need some sort of uh, custom, uh, bring your own SIAM sort of uh, uh, integration, then there is certainly a reporting API available, which can help you take your logs anywhere you want. So with that, uh, let me show you a couple of uh, quick examples of the demonstrations where we will see how Google Workspace by itself uh, provide you security based on the context and then how beyond corp can complement that so for example this is the user experience on safari and when i say safari remember uh, we talked about there are some security controls uh, or zero trust controls that you can apply only on chrome uh, so things like device context partner signals these are only available if a user is using google chrome with endpoint verification uh, in extension installed. So what about browser then? Because you need to then enforce users in some way so that they can only access Google Workspace from Chrome. And if they come from any other browser, then you have two, two, uh, two choices. Choice number one is to block all the app access in case if they don't come from uh, Chrome browser. Or maybe if they're coming from Safari or any other browser except Chrome, then give them access, but only to the applications that you may consider as less sensitive. So that's what I, I applied uh, in this demonstration. So I'm saying in case if the user comes uh, from Chrome, then user would have access to all the applications. But in case if the user comes from any other browser, such as uh, Safari, then user will have access to Google Meet and Google Chat because my organization considers them as less sensitive, but user won't have access in this case, Gmail, Google Drive, and third-party applications. So let me play the video. Hopefully you can. I don't know if there is a uh, audio in that. Just a second. My Google Workspace dashboard using Safari. When I go to, for example, Google Meet, I should be able to access because policy doesn't restrict it. But if I click on Google Drive, it says you don't have access because policy says you need Chrome and I'm coming from Safari. Same case with uh, Gmail. I don't have access, but I should be able to access Google Chat. And it's not just supported on uh, native Workspace applications, but also SAML apps. So when I click on Canva, where I've applied the policy, it says you don't have access. This is how you can apply policies in Google Context of Access or Beyond Corp to enforce Chrome browser uh, to access Google Workspace native applications and also applications for Google. My Google Workspace dashboard using Safari. When I go to, for example, Google Meet, I should be able to access because policy doesn't restrict it. Okay, so this was a quick example of uh, how you can uh, enforce the browsers so that users will need Chrome. And now this is the experience that user will have. The same user, nothing changed, same identity, uh, but the only thing that's changed here is now a user is coming uh, with a Chrome browser. So let's see his experience. So now he should be able to access uh, the same user. He should be able to access all the applications, including Drive, which was not accessible when same user tried to log in um, from uh, Safari. Okay, so now user can access all of these 
applications. Okay, now let's talk about uh, upload download restrictions. And that's where I think it might help you differentiate and answer the question. If we already have Google Workspace Enterprise Plus, let's say, which offers context of our access, how would Beyond Corp uh, complement it? So now let's take this example. The user has this context of access policy, which says if the Chrome is used and if the access request is coming from our allowed uh, regions, such as United States, then user should be able to access Google Drive. Okay. But what if we need to complement that policy saying, in case, even after getting access, in case if a user tries to download any document from Google Drive, if that document doesn't contain any sensitive information, sure, user should be able to download it. But in, ca in case if that document contains sensitive information, then user should not be able to download that sensitive content. So let's see that in action. Okay, so in this case, I have two separate documents. document which has my secret information okay and then the second one is a good boy document which says yeah i'm pretty good so you should be fine downloading me now the user will try to download the good boy document first and because it doesn't have any sensitive information you see the scan happening in the left bottom corner there and user downloaded the document but now let's see what happens when users try to download this sensitive document. The scan is taking place within Chrome and it says this document has sensitive information and you are not allowed to download it. Sorry, dude, no downloads. Of course, you can come up with better messaging here. Uh, but this is what's happening where Chrome essentially is acting as the firewall, checking the conditions that you have defined to make one level further authorization based on the context okay so things like based on sensitive content can user even the user has access based on context of access policies can or cannot download content but this is native google workspace application you might say how about other applications which has no connection with google workspace so let's take an example of that one too so here this is known google uh, workspace application it's dropbox let's play that and essentially user will have the same experience here too so here i have this document that i'm trying to upload it's a private document which has sensitive information and it again the scan happens within the chrome browser and then the user based on that sensitivity of the information gets an error message saying sorry you're not allowed to upload that document because of this custom message, then the, uh, which of course you can configure as an admin. So that's where Beyond Corp is adding a complementary layer to your Google Workspace context of your access uh, controls that you already have in place if you're using Google Workspace Enterprise. Now there are more controls that you can uh, leverage uh, based on the whole Google. Uh, work safer program for example you know geographic location access i'll skip that one uh, but things like uh, access from managed profile right so when you are uh, asking or creating a policy for your users that they must access from chrome then within chrome you can even differentiate more so you can say in case if the user may be uh, uh, using uh, Google Chrome profile. And normally we use profiles on bring uh, our own device. So we have like our own uh, you know, personal uh, laptop where we will just create one more Chrome profile and we will call this profile maybe our corporate profile. We will put our ID and password and it will say, well, your organization has enforced that you sign in with your uh, credentials and that this will be a managed profile. But usually, uh, in case if it's a corporate device, you may uh, register that as a managed Chrome browser 
So it can be called a managed device and you can push those policies from admin console. So you may come up with like different controls for managed profile where user might have his or her own device just signing up with new Chrome profile or it's a managed browser, which means it's it can be considered as a managed device itself. So let me show you an example here. So of course, user you can apply different policies based on whether the browser is profile managed or browser managed. Okay, now let's see uh, a different demonstration where we have the printing restriction. I do not want my users to be able to leverage printing even if they have managed a uh, profile because it seems they might be using their personal device. But in case if that same user is using company device, which is browser managed, then user should be able to leverage print. So let me play that and you will see it's the same user, two different uh, machines here. The first one, BCE at my domain, okay? When I go at print, you will see the print is disabled. So user cannot leverage print, okay? But now if that same user, BCE at my domain, this is a company owned device or this is a browser managed device, that user should be able to take the printouts. So you can essentially leverage these uh, combination of work safer policies with context of access you can complement them with Google Chrome, such as the one that you just saw, uh, printing, same user, different profiles, different personas, you can make controls. And also you can complement with things like tight and security keys so that your second factor is as strong as possible today. And then finally, you can also apply Beyond Corp as a, a complement to your Google workspace so after the binary access control, which is provided by context of your access, which defines whether you can or cannot access a specific resource based on the context within the scope of workspace plus SAML applications, you can also add beyond corp to, to do uh, you know, further controls. User can access based on certain policies, but what user can do now as he has access to this resource and that resource now is not limited to workspace or SAML apps. You can take that uh, gate or the firewall to Google Cloud Platform applications, AWS applications, Azure applications, and even the applications that are running within your premises. So I think uh, that is uh, it. It was a quick rundown of uh, some of the controls that are available. Uh, within uh, Google Workspace and how you can complement them with Google Beyond Club. So I'll be happy to uh, take any questions that you might have now. We had one, we had a couple questions from the community, but first from Holger, if there's a collection of white papers about the topics that we can share, and if yes, I'm assuming yes, if we can share it in the community as the recap post. Is there anywhere a collection of white papers about the topics you talk here with best practices? Example, for Beyond Corp, uh, certainly there is a white paper we published on how we internally rolled out uh, uh, Beyond Corp or Zero Trust uh, almost a decade ago. So uh, really and I see if we can uh, uh, post that into the community. And then there were some best practices mentioned about, you know, uh, Google Workspace admin best practices and how you can leverage some of the security measures that we offer. Uh, for that, I would recommend you to simply Google for Google Workspace security checklist. And ideally, the first or second result will be a list of, I think, more than 100 controls that, uh, that you can leverage. And in case if you're running Google Workspace enterprise subscription, you may go to your admin console, security, security center, security health, and it will show you the checklist of the security recommendations that we have for your organization specifically, along with uh, their status, whether you have applied uh, some of them and which one of them are pending or to be applied, uh, along with uh, an option to go to the help center article 
for that specific control so you can follow that recommendation step by step okay Great. Uh, uh, so one question that came in from the community was do we need to be on corp if we already have google workspace enterprise plus yeah, it, it, great question. So I think the different differentiating layer or uh, question will be number one, uh, as we just discussed, context of your access is provided as part of Google Workspace Enterprise Plus, and uh, it the scope of context of your access is that you can apply conditional access to Google Workspace applications like Gmail Drive, Chat Meet, etc and SAML applications where Google is acting as your identity provider. But in case, if you have applications running in Google Cloud Platform, maybe you have an app engine, uh, a web app uh, hosted in GCP, you have uh, compute engine instances running, or maybe you have Kubernetes, and if you need to apply uh, the access controls there, or maybe if you have applications uh, running in AWS or Azure or on-prem, and if you have a need to apply same conditional access controls. In that case, you should complement it beyond with beyond Corp Enterprise. In case if you already have context of your access, but you need to go one step further, defining okay, based on the context, user can access the resource, but or the application, but what user can do now they are inside the application based on uh, their CAA or context. Can they download the application? Can they upload the application? Uh, can they upload the data or download the data? If you need that level of control only within the scope of Google Workspace or SAML applications, then you should go with Beyond Corp Enterprise uh, Essentials. Great. Uh, next question that came from the community was, which, subscri which subscription is recommended if we have resources in Workspace, GCP, and on-prem? Uh, in that case, I mean, you have resources in GCP and uh, on-prem, then uh, you would go with uh, Google Beyond Corp Enterprise. And uh, I think we covered that into this presentation, but uh, once we post the recap or the recording, you can learn more about this. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, because uh, Google Beyond Corp Enterprise Essentials is primarily meant for Google Workspace customers so that they can apply more controls uh, than the ones that come with context of access. If you need to control GCP or other cloud or on-prem, then you should go with Google Beyond Corp Enterprise. Got it, great. Uh, third and final question is, will Beyond Corp work on browsers other than Chrome? Uh, good question. So there are uh, a few different set of uh, context signals provided. So for example, you have the user uh, side, which is uh, user's IP address, user geographic location, et cetera. Uh, that level of context-based uh, policies will be applied on all the browsers. But in case if you need to leverage device context, such as which operating system, is the device encrypted, is this device company versus personal owned, uh, or maybe partner signals like threat intelligence signals from uh, the vendor that you already use and which has Beyond Corp Alliance, then uh, for those, you will need Chrome uh, as we read that context uh, via the endpoint verification extension that is pushed to Beyond uh, to Google Chrome. Uh, but the good part here is that you can create a policy that will say user can only access these sensitive applications if they are using Chrome. If they are not, then either they won't have access or they may have access, but only to non-sensitive applications. Great, that was all the questions that came from the community. If there's anyone else who'd like to come off mute, we'll give you a second, but if not, um, then thank you Goldie for presenting. Our next session will be on November, or excuse me, December 6th, and that'll be on um, frontline workers. And again, if there's any other questions, we'll give you a second. But if not, Goldie, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone joining today. Yep. Preston, we'll drop the link in the community in the same space where you saw it before. It should go out sometime this week.
Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Goldie. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.